I just received three boxes of these batteries from Battery Hookup. These are LG cells. They're pouch cells. They're uh, lithium NMC with 3.7 volt nominal. And I want to see how easy it is to assemble these into a DIY power wall. Now I have not taken these apart yet. So we're gonna find out how easy or difficult it is to actually assemble this into a battery. With a separator between each group, all the positive and negative tabs seem to be taped off. I'm noticing the edges of this metal are a little bit sharp and I don't wanna cut myself so I'm gonna throw some gloves on. Well, here's all 14 cell groups. I say cell groups because there's actually two cells in each one of these little packs, which means that there's actually 28 cells, but 14 cell groups. Should make approximately a six kilowatt hour battery pack. These cost $50 each or $700 total. But if you use my coupon code, David Paws, you can get 10% off. So this would be $630. Now they also sell these in modules. They sell them in 10S and 8S modules. And so the modules themselves kind of group together like this. Now I think uh, getting a big 10S module or an 8S module would be great. Those would be with bus bars connecting the tabs already. Now what Battery Hookup did is any of the larger modules that had some kind of damage somewhere on the module, they didn't want to sell. So they broke them apart and they're selling the individual cell groups like this. Now the larger 10S or 8S modules are 3P 10S, but these module packs are arranged in a 2P. So each one of these is 2P. So we're gonna create a 2P 14S battery. At least that's my hope I uh, haven't worked out all the details yet, but that's what hopefully we'll be able to do. 3.575. I just finished testing all of the cells and there's only a three millivolt difference between high and low. This was my highest cell at 3.577. Most of them were 3.575. And this is the positive side of the cell. It says positive there. And this is the positive tab, and these are made out of aluminum. And then if we take off the negative side, you can see that those negative tabs are copper. The negative side being copper, you can solder to that, but the positive side being aluminum, uh, you can't solder to that one. At least I don't have luck soldering to it, even with special flux. Uh, so we'll try something different. It looks like they'd be folded up to the bus bar, which would be up top. And they were cut off using a Dremel, at least it looks like. This tab is pretty long, and this other tab here is fairly short. Yeah, so it looks like, that. yep, so it should come apart fairly easily, hopefully. Yeah, awesome. There we go. Okay, so it's probably an aluminum case because the magnet's not sticking to it. Here's the two cell package. Now in between the two cells, there is some kind of black spacer. I don't know exactly what this black spacer material is, but I'm told it has something to do with helping thermal management. One tab is gonna be longer than the other based on where they were bent over. That's the same on this side. so I'm not at risk of shorting them out. We have positive and positive. <laughs> Look at that. There's actually a little bit of a snap action and the plastic is now holding itself together. That is cool. Off camera, I was trying several different orientations of the cells. Ideally, I wanted to be able to bolt them straight together, but the cell tabs were just not long enough to be able to do this. These are aluminum tabs. They're very difficult to work with. What I've done is I've taken this piece of nickel strip and I folded it over right here on this tab. 
and I found that I'm able to spot weld it with the K weld if I fold over the tab and then I'm going to press up against it on the other side. And now that's spot welded on there. I just spot welded this tab here using 100 joules. I found I need 100 joules to consistently get the positive side, which is aluminum, to stick. The trouble is that it gets very hot. This is 160 Fahrenheit and 71 Celsius. So basically, I have to let this sit for about half an hour, cool down to room temperature, then I can do one tab. Because this is taking so long to let it cool, I'm going to change and use some rivets and see if that works any better. So I screwed down these two to test it, uh, doing it with rivets. I took an old piece of three quarter inch copper pipe and I cleaned it up and I flattened it and now I've got this and this will be my test piece. And what I'll do is put it right across here. I've cut out this piece of plastic right here and here on both of them. That way when the rivet goes in, the rivet won't be hitting the plastic. And it looks like it busted through one of those pieces of nickel that I tried. It's kind of loose actually. I don't think that worked very well. Put another piece of copper like behind it to help strengthen this. I really liked the way this copper bus bar looked, but it had a lot of play in it. It was not very strong. I even tried another method of the copper bus bar and rivet connection, and it still didn't work very well. So then I changed gears completely and went to a different method. I just used some blue dye and I put it on the aluminum and then it dries really quick and I can mark it out and score it. So what I'm doing right now, I'm just coming in half an inch from each side. This chunk of aluminum, now this is three quarters of an inch thick and right now I have it cut to an inch and a half. So I'm going to be running this down uh, and cutting it in half. So I'm going to get two blocks out of it. This is a lot of aluminum to cut through. So it's going to take a toll on my drill bits and my saw blades. So if you were going out and buying something, I mean, I just had this around, but if you were buying one for this project, uh, just get some three quarter inch square stock from your local hardware store. It's like $10, $15, something like that. So hollow on the inside. And that'll be super easy to drill and cut um, instead of being a solid block. And I think it would be just fine as far as amps. I just marked the center line of the holes. Now I have the holes in these uh, pieces of aluminum and they need to line up with the tabs. But what I found is that even when I backed this on the piece of plywood, I was tearing apart this aluminum with the drill bit. So I used that as an excuse to go get a new tool. So this is a uh, punch tool, it's pneumatic, meaning it runs on air pressure. And now I can just line this up 
See, I was a little bit off, so I can just come back. It doesn't matter. Uh, if you don't have the punch, you could just come in with a Dremel. This is a negative tab, so I'm going to bring down on top of it a positive and push the assembly together. Now we need to get this in here. Now I polished up this side of the aluminum and I just want to make sure it fits, but I could get some. So we're going to need one block, two of the, I don't know, washer things. We'll need a couple of screws. These are 10 by 32 by one and a half inch. If you were using metric, something like a M5 or M6 maybe. I made up these. Now these are just some extension leads for the BMS. So we have a little eyelet crimped on there. And this is a silicone wire 16 gauge and it is 16 inches long. So I need to get a little bit of grease on here. So I'm going to use some of this and this is uh, carbon conductive grease. And the idea here is just to prevent the oxida oxidation layer from forming on the blocks. these two layers. So now I went ahead and I put the BMS wire on the first one and I've got the one of these on the bottom side that. Okay, so flat washer. Lock washer and nut. The, these nuts down here are 3 8 inch nuts. Here we go. Nice and tight. Okay. So now we've really sandwiched those tabs and that's not going to go anywhere. The trouble is that these particular tabs were cut really short. See how, see how short they are? And I don't have enough distance to go from here to the next tab. So if I put these two together, I won't be able to get them to clamp. I would need like a two inch tall aluminum block. So these aluminum blocks that I'm cutting right now, these are three quarters of an inch. There's a big gap in between them. So that to bring these together. And if I push them down, the bottom one will hit, but the top one winds up going backwards into the case and there's not enough room. Alright, so here's an idea. Let's see if it works. I haven't done this yet, uh, but I'm running out of cells and what I've been doing is is finding cells that kind of match each other as far as like one cell goes up and the next cell goes down. But in this case, this cell goes up and I don't have enough spares at this point. So let's try to flip these cells over and see if that works. So there's this aluminum case with a plastic frame. So if I just pop a little flathead screwdriver in here, they come apart really easy. There's no uh, glue, no tape, nothing like that. See that? They come apart real nice and easy. Let me just wipe this down. And let's see if we can flip this over in the case. Here are the nice cells. And go the other direction. Again, I haven't done this particular trick yet, so I'm not sure 100% if it's going to work, but I think it should. Now we put this back in. 
Yeah, that still snapped, so it still fit. And now the cell tabs face down. And I put this on. Now they kind of aim downward. And I think those are now going to be close enough together that I can get the aluminum block in here. Like, chewed up a bit from the Dremel tool that, that they use to cut it out. So I just take my Lyman pliers here and I just go down the line with it and I'm just flattening this out and what I'm gonna do is kind of bring it in about right so now the two tabs line up with each other and they come out flat now I can cut my holes now I wipe down both surfaces, uh, the back side here and the cell, so that when I place these on top, I don't want to trap any pieces of dirt in there. And now when I go to put these on top, I check, and that's a negative. So now I look for the positive, and that's a positive, so I'm going to arrange them this direction. All 14 cells are now stacked, and I think looking pretty good. We're not totally done with the build. We still have BMS, we still have main positive, main negative posts to build and come off from there. Thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy the videos, please like, subscribe, comment, share, and check out the links in the description below. They really do help out the channel. Thanks.